what we have is a d orthogonal galvanometer not the tangent galvanometer uh, a galvanometer is used to measure small currents in microamperes milliamperes if your current range exceeds you will limit the current by providing series shunts and all series or parallel shunts so it has a limited power rating it's very small power rating means it will not provide a loading effect into the system uh, we know the principle of galvanometer again like objective is to measure current so if current flows into the meter then we know because of magnetic suspension and all we know that a torque is there and the needle deflects so depending if it is calibrated properly if it is calibrated then the deflection shows the current flowing through the circuit uh but if you go to a manufacturer or some some shop and if you ask for a galvanometer what will you say first question is what is uh, what are the, what are your requirements mm-hmm. then you will say to him this should be my time period this should be this is the external resistance i can add to make the system critically damped for that i also need to have a knowledge of coil resistance and this should be my sensitivity sensitivity is what like sometimes it is only detection sometimes it is measurement i am expecting this much amount of sensitivity in this particular range sensitivity operation constants if i tell this to him then he will calculate by using this relationships he will calculate the displacement constant displacement constant is nba we know how much displacement it will get so he will calculate it and from that he will come to know what should be his number of turns what should be the area of cross section and what should be his, what material he should use mm-hmm. and second one is your spring constant from this he will come to know what what type of spring what should be my spring and finally moment of inertia j from that he will come to know what is what should be the shape and how how the rough he will get a rough idea so these depend in terms of these things operation constants if i go and tell him if i have this derivation he will do it but that we are doing it as an experiment so these are called construction constants so same thing the differential equation corresponding to this particular alco mechanical system is now spring term will come up because the spring is used is equal to applied torque and this applied torque is equal to some constant multiplied by i and once again this i is like when you the needle will not if it is critically damped there will not be oscillation but it is still moving from means there is a, there is a theta dot component also if theta dot is there there is back emf produced right so this theta, this the value of i will be applied voltage minus that theta dot multiplied by some con- the same constant g the voltage back emf will be that number of turns in the so that is how you are getting a theta dot term from this side if you take it to that side Tau plus g square into theta dot plus k theta. So k theta. Fine. So it's okay. Like we, if you solve this, means if you apply that critically damping condition, and if you do a little bit of rearrangement, if you consider your t is equal to two pi by omega, and time period is nothing but two pi by omega, and This is a second order system. From this, you will come to know if you if you bring this J to the denominator, 
then you will come to know what is omega n by standard comparison with this second order differential equation this, this particular equation in this domain you will come to know like you can derive these expressions if you apply the definitions and you can derive this and derive these expressions so that derivation part we expect student to complete it before coming to the lab so applications have been taught principle is taught derivation methodology is given so when it comes to doing the experiment quickly because we have a time constraint here this will take usually three hours because we have frequency response also one thing is missing there are two circuits you have to make in one one case the galvanometer external resistance is in series with the galvanometer and in the second case the external resistance is in parallel with the galvanometer so we require figure two only to only once we need to do only once and we need not have any knowledge of the previous parts a b and c we only require figure two only we need to in order to determine the critical external resistance for critical damping of the galvanometer only then you require figure two so the smart way of doing this experiment is after knowing all these things if you start with this figure two then you need not reconnect suppose you initially if you go and do figure one after you will go in a systematic order and you will reach here then here it is figure two is this you will change the connections once again what happens is for the next thing you are going to use figure one only figure one only. so you will unnecessarily lose time so the smart way to do is first do figure two find out this rs external resistance to make the system to be critically damped then go for figure one you will not you will not do it you will not remove it that is how you will save time and there is a little change in this particular circuit like it should be drawn like this p p q the variable part should come from here and and it should be made like this this is the only difference what i am trying to spot that's uh, variable resistance variable resistance the connection should be made like this because if you just don't if you drop this connection what is happening is the loop is not getting complete it is creating some instability the loop will not now if i do like this actually i am applying a part of voltage or i am reducing the current and i am applying only part of that voltage so if i don't connect this part no then what happens is uh, that current is it is it is significantly means this it is becoming some other circuit and uh, the current path is not proper so you make the connection like this for both figure 1 and figure 2 okay. only this variable part i am stressing remaining things are same this k3 is used for safety purpose you have done this experiment in your uh, previous semester so do it for uh, figure 2 first follow it with figure 1 you will be able to i think it should be over within if you do it sincerely with focused attention it should be over within 2 hours most of the times i see like the another thing is this figure is like uh, another miss it should not be given it need not be given because when people try to measure this without without studying what is actually what it is done it is theta 1 minus theta f so no need of theta 2 so they had some difficulty in measuring theta 2 so what you need to find is theta f only here you will do theta 1 and theta 2 here theta 1 first peak overshoot is the maximum deviation from 0 to the start from maximum point you will make a note where how much magna how much over should is there and theta fine this this is this are some drawbacks and here it is not 2n it is 2 pi by t it's a typing mistake and finally what new thing can be done is you are determining this 
j k and all the other constants means you know the transfer function from the first part from transient and transpose you are, you are knowing the transfer function once you know some transfer function you can use matlab to find the bode part you can obtain its bode part you can obtain the frequency response from the transfer function you are applying you are obtaining frequency response in this particular range you can just compare and see your experimental data how correct it is right? this computes